Shortly after 9 this morning, a military fighter, an A-7 Corsair, on a training mission from Pittsburgh to Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma, experienced a flameout, loss of power, attempting to glide to Indianapolis International, but the pilot evidently was short. The pilot ejected safely. The plane continued on ripping across the top of the single-story Bank One building, skipping across the street, plowing into the north side of the Ramada Inn, filling the hotel with fire. An eyewitness was at a nearby filling station. Uh, we ran back towards the place. We seen a guy get out of his car. He was on fire. He was running. And somebody got him down and wrapped him up in their coat. And it was a terrible. There are nine known dead. Workers continue to search the hotel for victims. In Indianapolis, this is Fred Heckman. To me, it was kind of frightening, okay, because the plane was so low, and you seen him eject, you, you just knew what was going to happen, okay? Uh, it was just terrifying. It's probably the worst thing I've ever seen. Ronnie Utterbach was working on a car at the Marathon Station right next to the Ramada Inn when the Air Force A-7 slammed into the lobby after clipping the roof of a Bank One branch. Hours after the impact, fire crews were still battling a raging blaze in the hotel that had to be brought under control before the grim task of recovering bodies could begin. The airplane's landing gear lay in the middle of the road, and a charred car that had been parked in the carport lay at a twisted angle. Entire floors of the hotel lay ripped open, the beds, lamps, and chairs visible from the ground. And it would be hours before front loaders could move in to lift the debris of the jet embedded in the building, and rescuers would know with certainty the full extent of the disaster of an October morning. Phil Henry, WIBC News. Like I said, I was following, following the plane because you could see it was directly going into the motel. And the gentleman was getting out of his car, out of his car, and the next thing I seen was just a big ball of fire, and the guy was just literally on fire running. Ronnie Utterbach was working under the hood of a car at a nearby marathon station when he looked up and saw the pilotless Air Force A-7 plunging toward the Ramada Inn, clip the roof of the Bank One branch, and slam into the hotel lobby. He says it was the most terrifying scene of his life. Seconds later, the plane erupted into a fireball that kept emergency crews busy for hours. And even as the fire continued to smolder, front loaders were brought in to lift debris and allow emergency responders to retrieve the victims of what Indianapolis Mayor William Hudnut called the worst disaster to happen in the city since the Coliseum explosion of 1963. Phil Henry, WIBC News. A snorkel truck has helped sheriff's deputies remove clothes and other belongings from the Ramada Inn as work to put out a small rekindled fire continues. The general in charge of the investigation is here. He will meet with reporters to talk about the probe later tonight. Nine people died in the explosions of fire that followed the morning plane crash. Some of those burned beyond recognition. And although released from Methodist Hospital this afternoon, the pilot of the plane is reported to be at the Fort Harrison Hospital. He was not seriously hurt. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. The Brigadier General of the Air Force in charge of the plane crash investigation will soon explain to reporters still on the scene what comes next in the investigation. Four of nine victims from the crash have been identified, including this man's cousin. He found out about her death while waiting at the Adams Mark Hotel. I, of course, knew right away that she probably was there because she worked in the dining room on the breakfast shift. And I just waited for her to call me all day because I was sure that she would call and say that everything was fine and she didn't. No other discoveries have been made of bodies, but at least three searches of the hotel have been done since the plane crash this morning. Dave Harlan, WIBC News. There are still people in there. They still have a working fire in there. The pilot ejected a mile out. He's at Methodist now, as I think people know. And they're going to interview him. Uh, it looks as though uh, the plane flamed out bounced off the bank. He ejected, and then it just bounced off the bank building and went into the Ramada. And uh, we're trying to comfort these uh, uh, relatives and friends and loved ones, like the couple right in back. I mean, their sister was working the front desk, and they haven't heard anything. 9.10 a.m. this morning, uh, the uh, airport fire rescue units were notified that a military A-7 had had a flame out. Uh, that's a complete engine failure and was making an emergency landing at Indianapolis International Airport. And our equipment responded immediately to stand by the runway, but within a moment or two, uh, he had not arrived, and uh, uh, we witnessed smoke coming from the uh, 
Park Fletcher area, and our equipment diverted immediately to the Park Fletcher area to find the Ramada Inn on fire. Uh, we've since learned that the uh, the pilot, uh, this is a single seat uh, fighter airplane, and he was en route from Pittsburgh to Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma, and the pilot uh, uh, ejected the aircraft uh, successfully, and he has been taken to Methodist Hospital for checkup. But the plane uh, skidded off the roof at Bank One and and crashed into the front lobby area of the Ramada Inn. Okay, I was turning a corner at Executive Drive in Progress. I'm an employee of Airborne Express. As I turned the corner, there was an aircraft coming from the northwest, flying low over Park Fletcher. It was in a hard bank to the right. As it flattened out, there was a small explosion toward the rear of the plane, and at that time, the pilot ejected. And it was on a downward motion, and about 15 seconds later, all I could see was black smoke. I did not see the impact. I've seen everything. I was outside on the drive talking to a customer, and the manager, Ronnie Utterback, was off standing out there, and we heard an explosion in the sky. We looked up, we seen the top of the fighter jet come off, and the pilot bailed out. And by that time, we didn't know if the plane was heading towards the gas station or the mighty end. Everybody was, the owner said run, everybody run. He just ran the station, get everybody out. By that time, the plane bounced off the street into the lobby of the Ramada Inn, and that's when the big explosion happened. And um, uh, we ran back towards the place. We seen a guy get out of his car. He was on fire. He was running, and somebody got him down and wrapped him up in their coat. And it was terrible. Mr. Litcher, what can you tell us about the crash? Uh, an employee of mine uh, called me. He was across the street attending a class. He's out in, in the EDS building on the south side of the airport expressway, and they said a, an Air Force single-place plane uh, had just crashed across the street, cr uh, crashed into the Ramada Inn. Uh, he said they saw it coming in. They were afraid it was going to hit, uh, hit them, and it veered slightly to the north and hit the uh, Ramada. They also saw the, uh, the pilot eject and uh, land somewhere over by the airport. And uh, he said it was a total pandemonium over there. He said... Uh, that would be plane. indicative of a military aircraft then, yeah, would it? Yeah, that's right. He, he said they couldn't, they didn't know if it was an F-15 or an F-4. He wasn't quite sure because it all happened pretty fast. Um, we've got units up there now trying to block the scene, uh, that particular area from so Bradbury, and we're going to be trying to block in intersections on 70 from Holt Road down to 10th Street so that we can get ambulances uh, going through. Command post has been set up on Bradbury between the Ramada Inn and um, there's a gas station down there somewhere that they're sending us. 5500, I believe, is the address. Using a command post through Marion County Sheriff. We've got our units and Marion County Sheriff 
uh, right there at the command center now, and we're trying to get them dispersed so that we can get things moving and, and calm down a little bit out there. The nine people killed in the plane crash died instantly in the lobby area of the Ramada Inn Airport Hotel. Jim McHugh of Airport Operations followed the Indianapolis International Fire Crew to the hotel just off the airport expressway. Coming around to the front of the building, by that time, our fire department had put light water and foam on the building, which immediately extinguished the large fireball. And from that time, it was nothing more than smoke and some intermittent small fires. At 31,000 feet and 15 miles from Indianapolis, an Air Force pilot had lost power. He tried to make it back safely, but did not. This morning, the Air Force investigation into the crash will begin, and the highest ranking officer here for the probe is Brigadier General Tom Hall, who will rebuild the Ramada. Uh, I'm sure that between the Air Force uh, claims and the legal office and uh, the owners, uh, that they'll resolve all that. Last night, the names of four victims were released, all our employees. Three men and six women died in the crash. Two people were sent to Wishard Hospital with serious burns. Two firefighters also suffered from smoke inhalation. The Air Force Mishap Investigation Board is to begin its probe on Wednesday. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. Six women and three men died in Tuesday morning's crash of an A-7 fighter into the Ramada Inn Airport Hotel, most of them employees, according to the county coroner. At 31,000 feet, the pilot lost power to his aircraft, and he was faced with a decision. He had 44 miles to go to Terre Haute without any thrust, any power, or he had 15 miles to make it to Indianapolis. And if I were in his shoes, I would have done the same thing and tried to bring the airplane down safely. Jim McHugh of Airport Operations. Coming into Indianapolis International under heavy cloud cover, pilot Bruce Teagarden could not see the ground. And when he pierced the clouds at 800 feet, he was coming in too high to land. The pilot tried to circle back, and he disappeared off air controller's radar screens. Bob Spittler is acting airport director. The information I have that, that he said to the tower was, uh, I'm looking for an open field, i got to get out. And, and he was very low, apparently, at that time. He had already passed over this airport. When the jet skimmed the bank branch and hit the hotel, over 100 people were inside the Ramada Inn. Late Tuesday night, Sheriff Joe McAtee said three searches of the hotel had found everything they expect to find. Air Force investigators are on their way to Indianapolis to launch a thorough review of the engine failure that brought the A-7 craft to the ground. The investigation is expected to take one month. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. At the Adams Mark Hotel, Bradley House waited all day to hear what happened to his cousin. The restaurant worker at the Ramada Inn was at work when the A-7 jet stormed into the hotel's lobby. House called the Red Cross to get information. I, of course, knew right away that she probably was there because she was worked in the dining room on the breakfast shift. And I just waited for her to call me all day because I was sure that she would call and say that everything was fine. And His cousin never called and was among those killed. Six women, three men died in the Air Force jet crash. The pilot survived and had tried to steer the plane into a field beyond the hotel after gliding back to Indianapolis. Engine failure left the plane without power. Still unaccounted for Tuesday night were nine people who may have checked out before the morning disaster. We still have some people that we have not found, but, but we, we don't, I don't mean to indicate not found there. there. There are a few people that probably have checked out and left that maybe have not heard about this. That was the last report I had. Marion County Sheriff Joe McAtee. The Air Force plans an investigation into the cause of the crash and debris remains from the bank branch hit by the plane to the front door of the airport Ramada Inn, destroyed when a single-engine jet plowed into the lobby. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. The last major air disaster for Indianapolis air traffic controllers was the 1969 Shelby County mid-air collision of a DC-9 and a small plane. Nearly 100 were killed in that crash. Tuesday's airport hotel crash killed nine. Mayor Hudnut praised the many agencies who worked together on the emergency management of the disaster, comparing it to another incident years ago. Undoubtedly the worst disaster to hit our city uh, since the Coliseum explosion in 1963. Under heavy cloud cover, pilot Bruce Teagarden tried to land his plane after losing power over Indiana. Coming down, being above the clouds and coming down, his intent obviously was to come down, penetrate through the clouds on a radar vector, steer right into the end of that runway and land it. But the attempt failed, according to the airport's Bob Spittler, when Teagarden approached the runway too high and tried to circle around for another shot. 
There he lost control and ejected to safety as the jet smashed into the hotel lobby, instantly killing those at the front desk, lobby, and laundry room. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. Hours after the fire had been put out at the Ramada Inn, sheriff's deputies doing a room-by-room -room search discovered a small fire in an air shaft. Yet again, Wayne Township Fire responded. What was once the airport Ramada Inn is burned and pitted. Curtains flap from broken windows. Pictures are still attached to walls. This all happened as an A-7 Air Force fighter on a regular training flight lost power over Indiana. It's called flameout. Exactly the same as though your car stopped in the middle of the freeway. He has no thrust. There is no power on the aircraft. It stops. Jim McHugh of Indianapolis International. But did the pilot make the wrong decision to land here? He could have gone on to Terre Haute. Brigadier General Tom Hall at a Tuesday night talk with reporters says the pilot did try to avoid the hotel. Uh, the information, very preliminary, is that he was trying to do just that. And how so? By steering it towards an open field. Still to be questioned by the Air Force is the pilot held now at the Fort Harrison Hospital and reported in good condition. In all, nine died in the air crash, most of them employees of the Ramada Inn. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. 35-year-old Bruce Teagarden made a choice Tuesday morning to try landing at Indianapolis International Airport instead of coasting to Terre Haute. Indianapolis was a lot closer. His plane was without power. There was heavy cloud cover. The pilot experienced what the military refers to as a flame-out. This, as you know, is an attack aircraft. It has only one engine, one occupant, that is the pilot. Bob Spittler of the airport says the A-7 aircraft pierced the clouds too high to make the runway. And when he tried to bank and try another landing, the plane came close to the ground. The pilot bailed out, and the plane landed in the lobby of the Ramada Inn Airport. Bradley House is a relative of one woman killed in the explosion. He called the Red Cross when he found out what had happened. We began to call, and I didn't have any information. And then we came down and gave them information, and they were able to identify her. House was able to identify his cousin late Monday night at the Adams Mark Hotel with pictures from the Marion County Coroner. It's thought that all bodies have now been recovered and the investigation by the Air Force is ready to begin. We won't know the results for at least 45 days, according to the general sent by the Air Force to coordinate the probe. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. It's by far the worst tragedy to ever hit the Ramada Hotel chain. That according to Dave Thompson, the corporate vice president of communications for the franchises. He and others with the corporation flew in from Phoenix to help assess the damage to the hotel, but especially to help guests, employees, and others deal with the aftermath of the tragedy. Last night, they toured the property. We, uh, we arrived here last night from, uh, from Phoenix, a group of us from our corporate headquarters, and we uh, just did a walk through and walk around, if you will, with the uh, with the Air Force. Uh, they showed us uh, uh, the area in front of the hotel where the, the plane hit, uh, and showed us the debris, and then explained the process of their. Uh, their cleanup and cataloging of the parts. The task facing Thompson today, trying to match personal belongings salvaged from the hotel and get them to their owners and also deal with what happens with the employees and possible temporary placements elsewhere. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. Tuesday was not a nightmare, and many Indianapolis residents are waking up to that fact as they pass the grim reminder of the jet crash into the Ramada Inn. Dave Thompson, the corporate vice president of communications for Ramada, flew in with a group from Phoenix to offer their support to employees, guests, and the franchise owners. The corporation, uh, we're trying to do whatever we can to help the employees of the hotel and certainly the, uh, uh, the guests of the property who were displaced by the, uh, by the tragedy. Uh, you know, we are trying... Uh, worked all day yesterday from uh, from Phoenix to do what we could to help get the people temporarily moved to uh, to new locations and uh, we'll be working today to help them uh, uh, kind of get back their personal belongings which were uh, taken by the coroner from the scene yesterday and you know, placed with the sheriff's office for safekeeping. But Thompson says they may be able to work out some temporary positions for their surviving employees. Meanwhile, Thompson surveyed the scene Tuesday night and is now in the process of trying to match personal belongings and vehicles with people. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. 
Grim military police stand watch over the shell of the Ramada Inn at the airport, attesting to the truth that, yes, indeed, a nightmare happened there Tuesday. But after the cleanup and the investigation, what will become of the structure? Dave Thompson, the corporate vice president of communications for Ramada, says all that will be assessed. And he and others with Ramada are in Indianapolis to offer support to their people, their employees, and the owners of the franchise. And uh, we'll be working today to help them uh, uh, kind of get back their personal belongings, which were... Uh, taken by the coroner from the scene yesterday and, you know, placed with the sheriff's office for safekeeping. Uh, we'll also be helping them get their vehicles back if, uh, uh, if indeed they left a vehicle at the property when they, uh, when they left yesterday. Thompson says this is by far the worst tragedy to ever hit the Ramada chain, a tragedy which, with all their planning for fires, for natural disasters, and for others' acts of God and nature, could not have been foreseen. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. There is no black box, no crash survivable flight recorder to mechanically testify as to what caused the A-7 to crash into the Ramada Inn. But Brigadier General Tom Hall of the U.S. Air Force says they should be able to accurately reconstruct the accident by the wreckage of the plane. But the general defends the actions of the pilot, who he says came out of a curtain of clouds, not knowing what he was getting into, bailing out 800 feet before impact. The direction that the airplane was going when he came out of the overpass was right towards a heavily populated area. He was turning to try to get back to the airfield. Uh, and when the airplane uh, controls uh, started uh, to fail, as they do with this emergency situation, uh, he had to jump out. He tried to point it at an empty field. The general says hydraulics don't work when the emergency system fails. General Hall says it could be a month to 45 days before they put together a report on what happened. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. Only one minute elapsed between the time a jet crashed into an airport motel and the time fire crews were hosing down the flames. That, according to Jim McHugh, the director of operations at the airport, McHugh says units had already assembled on the runway in anticipation of the A-7's crash landing and immediately headed in the direction of the Ramada when it became obvious the jet was hitting there. We have to maintain a certain posture on the airport here or you must close the airport down. Meanwhile, the airport was only shut down for 20 to 30 seconds following the crash, but flight operations resumed as normal. Passenger jets continued to take off and land, even as fire crews were racing to the hotel. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. Some of the best support for those who've endured the tragedy of the Ramada jet incident is coming from the hotel and motel industry as a group. The Hotel and Motel Association of Indianapolis is working to place those who no longer have a place of employment, but they're also working to put together a memorial fund, and although the specifics have not been decided yet, the idea is snowballing. Raymond Dalt, the executive secretary of the association, says many members have expressed their interest in doing something to remember those who died. One idea is a contribution in their names to a charity. Other ideas include giving money to the victims' families or even establishing scholarships. All that could be decided at the association's next meeting in November. What they definitely will do and soon is set up seminars to continue to promote safety of hotel guests. Dalt says the reason why no guests perished in the crash is the quick thinking and training of Ramada employees who guided them safely out of the burning building. Dalt says he's working at setting up a seminar on crisis management and one on fire safety for all members and their employees. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. Air Force pilot Bruce Teagarden has already met twice with government investigators looking into the crash of his A-7 fighter into the Ramada Inn at the airport. General Tom Hall talked with Teagarden on Wednesday at Fort Harrison, where the Air Force major is being kept under observation. Hall says the 35-year-old pilot ejected just moments before his plane hit the hotel. Uh, he saw the airplane uh, after he ejected and what was going through his mind was uh, I almost what he said, oh no. In a statement released to the news media, Teagarden says to the families of those killed and injured and to the people of Indianapolis, please understand I did everything humanly possible to prevent this. My prayers are with you all. The plane carried no flight recorder, but the Federal Aviation Administration has control over the recordings made in the tower at Indianapolis International as the jet was attempting a landing. Those recordings are being held secret in part because of the military panel that is investigating the crash that killed nine hotel workers. Dave Arlen, WIBC News.
They're having nightmares, sleepless nights, feelings of impending doom, just a few of the normal symptoms being experienced by the survivors of Tuesday's tragedy, as well as the rescue personnel and other people who witnessed the jet crash into the motel or helped at the scene afterward. A training session for what they call caregivers, persons who are of assistance to relatives and friends of the victims, is scheduled for Saturday morning at the Ramada Inn South. Ruthie Purcell with the prosecutor's office who works with the National Organization for Victims Assistance says some people just don't know what to expect. Um, we oftentimes forget the secondary victims that are people such as the, the first responders to the scene, the employees in the buildings surrounding that watched what happened. People like that are who we call secondary victims. Purcell says it's very important for their loved ones to know these symptoms are normal and to be expected. Saturday's workshop is the first of many which will later be targeted for specific groups. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. A trust fund being set up by the Hotel and Motel Association of Indianapolis is getting overwhelming response from not only here in Indiana, but out of state. Tom Werner, the attorney for the association, says the fund was set up through Bank One with a $5,000 contribution from the association. The response has uh, simply been overwhelming. We've had inquiries from around the city, from around the state, and just yesterday the president of the association received some inquiries from out of state. Anyone who's interested can make a donation to the Ramada Inn Relief Fund at any Bank One branch or send it to the Association, trustee number 4, 310 North Alabama, Indianapolis, 46204. Werner says they don't know what they'll do with the money, but the decision will be made as a group. Lori Schiffer, WIBC News. Talking it out, that's the aim of several debriefing sessions set up through the National Organization for Victims Assistance for those connected with the Ramada in jet crash. Kara McLaughlin with Nova says after meetings with professionals and victims assistance people throughout the city, the families of the victims, survivors, and their families and eyewitnesses and rescue people have all been targeted for these sessions. Experience in that debriefing, for the first time those people will be giving a recounting of what they've experienced and also they, are, they are, will be dealing with their emotions at the time of the incident and it eventually, hopefully, we'll see a common bond develop among the survivors and among the rescue and emergency medical service providers and mental health providers. McLaughlin says that talking it out is a very important part of the healing process and most connected with the crash have expressed a desire to get together and talk about it. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. Well, the funds for the families of the victims of the Ramada tragedy continue to pour into Indianapolis Bank One branches. There's a call for another type of donation for those who survived the Holocaust. The Wayne Township Fire Department, the primary rescue people on the scene of the crash, is calling for donations of food for the survivors who can't work for the next few weeks. Anyone wishing to donate mm -hmm. non-perishable food goods to aid the employees of the Ramada may drop them off at any of the Wayne Township fire stations. The canned goods are just one example of a community pulling together in the face of a tragedy. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News. He did everything he could to keep from hitting it, said General Tom Hall, after talking with the pilot of the A-7 jet that crashed into the Ramada Inn on Tuesday, killing nine. Pilot Bruce Teagarden has already been back up in the air with investigators flying over the route of the powerless jet in a helicopter Wednesday afternoon. This will be a case of the Air Force investigating the Air Force, according to General Hall. Uh, is it appropriate? I don't know of anybody who's qualified to do it but the Air Force. The Federal Aviation Administration has joined in with the military review, but so far, civilian agencies like the National Transportation Safety Board have not been involved. The general says the Air Force is the expert here, and the NTSB doesn't own any fighter jets. The FAA is also refusing to release the tape of cockpit conversations between the pilot and controllers at Indianapolis. In a statement from the pilot released Wednesday, Bruce Teagarden says, It is impossible to express to you how deeply grieved I am by your loss. I wish with all my heart that it had been within my power to keep my plane headed toward that open field once I aimed it there. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. The A-7's pilot, Major Bruce Teagarden, was not injured in the crash that killed nine hotel workers. He was already being questioned Wednesday afternoon from a helicopter above the crash site. General Tom Hall says the pilot is distraught over the accident, and he read a statement offered by the Air Force flyer. In part, it says, Please understand, I did everything humanly possible to prevent this. My prayers are with you all. General Hall says Teagarden bailed out of his craft below the recommended limit of 2,000 feet, 
although an exact altitude has not been determined. If he'd waited any longer, the pilot might have been killed. Still, questions remain. Why did the powerless plane start back for Indianapolis instead of landing somewhere less populated? Could the air traffic controllers have been at fault? I think that they were doing everything they could possibly do. General Tom Hall. The Federal Aviation Administration on Wednesday refused to release tapes of controllers talking with the Air Force pilot, saying that the military was still investigating the incident. Dave Arlen, WIBC News. The owner and general manager of the airport Ramada Inn where nine died one week ago after an Air Force jet hit it would like to rebuild from the ground up in the same place. But whatever, the damage report tells him Sam Saney of Dayton, Ohio says he will continue to run a business there. If the hotel is to be rebuilt, we will rebuild it. If the hotel is not in a shape to be rebuilt, that means in case the loss of, or the damage is not that heavy, it can be renovated. Sani says the Air Force has claimed responsibility for the damage to the structure. As for the surviving employees, only one has found another job. And Sani says he wants to get back on his feet again for them. He says they need a family and miss working. The damage estimate to the hotel isn't in yet. Lori Schaefer, WIBC News.